Please pause the video and take a moment to read this important safety message. Short little video today from Blue Glow Electronics on replacing the power cord um, on a vintage piece of Macintosh equipment. And in this case, these are uh, MC30s, but the same would hold true for older MC60s, MC75s, uh, and likely other units. Um, but the the scenario is um, these older cords that these units had, they kind of have this uh, larger size round body here with a little bit of ribbing on it. They kind of have a rounded head on them. But most importantly, they have a two-prong cord that is non-polarized, as you can see here. One, one blade is not larger than the other blade, okay? And for a long period of time, you were able actually to get exact replacements for these because I guess some people um, had picked some up along the way. But they have dried up. I emailed uh, in searching on forums like um, Audio Karma and DIY Audio where people um, talk about these older pieces of Macintosh gear. Um, there were quite a few places that they recommended you go to to buy these, and I contacted all of them, and the sources have all dried up. So, I found another alternative to this. I thought I would show you that today. Okay, what I found were these, and these are made by a little company called Utilitech, and you can see the number here, 0179. 348 and it's a light duty workshop cord and this is an eight foot cord and it is a two prong polarized and and very important it is 16 gauge you don't want to go any smaller than 16 gauge which would mean you don't want to go higher in number um, it would be okay to go 14 gauge but then you're getting into a mighty big cord and these are already mighty big so stay with the 16 gauge and don't go certainly don't go with 18 um, or 20 gauge um, wire. And if you can see here, what you have on the end here is a molded plug, um, two prong, and one blade is wider and it's polarized uh, for more modern standards. And you can see here on the other end, it's just kind of a, uh, it's an extension type cord here where you can plug a single device into the other end. And what we're going to do is cut that off here. And the wire, believe it or not, is the exact same size here as what came out of the amplifier. Now, what happened when I was restoring these amplifiers is I had inspected the cords and they looked fine. Uh, matter of fact, I always check them right along in here and they seemed to be okay. And I had also checked them on the very end here and everything seemed to be okay. What I, what I failed to do um, was to check the very middle of the cord. And I'm not sure how easy it is to see here. But um, you can see that it's uh, starting to break apart here in the very middle of the cord. And so I told the customer, I think it's worth us going ahead and replacing these. And if we're going to do one amp, we should do the other one and get them both matched up and looking well. So, right. So at any rate, I bought this at uh, Lowe's Hardware, um, which is the popular um, DIY store here in my area. And their headquarters just happens to be right up the road from me. But I'm sure you could find similar at um, perhaps on Amazon or at uh, um, any of the other type, uh, Home Depot or whatnot. So let's get into replacing it. Okay, what you have here is you have your power cord and it comes through the amplifier in a rubber grommet like this. And I'll talk about that more in a minute. It basically then comes through on the other side here and it feeds up and what you have here is the actual hot wire or the black wire that goes to the fuse holder right here. And then you have the white wire that goes down here to a terminal lug position right here and ties off. And then ultimately it ends up coming out of that and feeding down along. Um, and if I zoom out here I can show you. It ends up feeding down along this chain here and goes into the uh, power transformer. And since these units don't have a power switch, there's no switch on them, typically you would switch the black side here, um, typically on the other side of this fuse, but there is no, uh, like I said, uh, switch on these. But the good news is when you use this new cord, the exact same layout will work. So you don't really have to worry a lot about it. You'll just hook the black wire up here to the same location and the white wire here up to the same location and you should be good to go. Now the toughest part of this whole journey is going to be getting this little um, rubber grommet out right here and let me turn it so you can see it. Um, and I'll show you how I go about doing that. So the way these little um, 
bushings work here is they have two pieces typically connected together by a little tab. And what happens is your cord here will just feed on the inside of this little slot like this. And then you kind of put this into its slot and then you squeeze these together. And you have to squeeze them enough here to push it into the amplifier. And the same thing if you're trying to remove one. You have to be able to squeeze enough here to be able to get the to compress the cord and this little unit to, to then pull out, okay? Well, I use a pair of pliers here, and they're made by Heiko, H-E-Y-C-O. And this, these are number 29s that I've gotten. These things are not exactly inexpensive, but what they're designed to do, and you can see kind of the offset canter on them, um, they're designed to kind of uh, reach around the cord. So as you're pinching this, you're, the cord's not in the way, you can see here. Um, and it allows you to squeeze those. If you don't have that, the best thing I've found to use is a normal pair of pliers like this, and you want to open them up. Use the little snap open here to where they're, you know, at their widest point like this. And then you just have to kind of turn the cable a little bit and work on the outer part like this and squeeze it together. You can get them off that way. Or if you happen to do a lot of restorations, a pair of these, um, you can pick up and they, they will help you ultimately reach in here, squeeze this. Of course, you want to cut the wires loose first and you'll squeeze those and pop it out. And uh, that's how I got the other side out. All right, we're going to start here by just cutting off the, uh, the head that we're not going to use here. And then we need to strip off enough of the outer sheathing here. And I've done enough of these. I've gotten good over the years. I can just use my uh, handy dandy... Uh, Greenly cutters here to kind of do that, and then you got to, you want to remove the. Uh, there is some um, cord in here just for um, kind of strength and safety measure that you're going to want to cut and get rid of. And once you do that, you should be down to just having there again the same two wires. And before I would strip the ends of these, I would typically then mount this in the unit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Uh, Kind of pretend that the, the wire was through the unit, leave enough here um, to do what you kind of need. We will then uh, kind of snap this around the, the wire where it would go right here. And then I'll get my uh, handy dandy. And you don't want too much in there, too much left over in there. Then it would be way back here. But you can always strip more off if you need. And as you can see here, I've kind of got the hay code pliers and all I'm going to do is... Uh, Kind of squeeze this unit together enough. And these are not always easy. Uh, they can take a little bit of uh, uh, maybe what I would call manhandling here to get these pushed in. Um, and you have to work it a little bit. But once they're there, they kind of snap. And you can see the unit is in there good. Now I can come along on the other side here and just kind of strip these wires ends off easily. And it's easy to uh, find the little 16 gauge slot on your on your strippers then. I would twist these together and we will solder them up real quick. And as you can see here I got these two uh, soldered up at this point and um, we are good to go now. Um, that was all there was to it. Okay just a few closing thoughts I'd leave you with. One some people may say hey why aren't you putting a three prong cord on that and you could. Um, you would just end up grounding the green wire to the chassis inside the amplifier, pick a nice spot for that. However, I, I've seen on forums before where people say they've had, you know, kind of grounding loop issues at that point. Um, I've done it many times and not had a lot of issues. So it might come down to the piece of equipment you're working on and how the grounding bus in that unit was originally designed. But uh, for this one, I was trying to stay as close to original as I can. Another thing uh, people may say, well, hey, if this thing had a non-polarized plug, now you've made it polarized and you don't have the ability to flip the plug around to try to reduce the most amount of hum possible. You could always grind off the, um, uh, the wide part of one of the blades and make both prongs the same. Um, either way, um, whether you've got a two-prong cord or a two-prong polarized, you're still playing outside of UL ratings if you're in the U.S. and that means anything to you. But um, I think the route I went here is a good safe route and will work just fine. It was the way these uh, units were originally 
uh, designed. You know, just pick a good cord with uh, at least 16 gauge wire on the inside. It had that um, cord strain relief inside of it. If you notice, this had two nice pieces of that, so that worked out well. And all in all, it was a pretty simple conversion. Hope you enjoyed this short video and hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for watching.